from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Sony Xperia Ion in AT&T. It's $99, and you get a lot of phone for the price, a 4.6-inch 720p display, 12-megapixel camera, and a lot of other good stuff, too. We're going to take a look at it now. So this is the Sony Xperia Ion. No more Sony Ericsson, by the way. They parted ways, so it's just Sony now, Sony Mobile. This is a 4.6-inch display. I'm full of marketing here. It's an HD reality display display with mobile Bravia engine so you've got two marketing names on top of this instead of one but I can tell you it's a gorgeous display 720p it's 1280 by 720 pixels and that Bravia engine brings out the contrast and the colors and you can see it's just simply luscious it's very sharp really color saturated very contrasty photographs that you take or any videos that you watch they're going to look better on this phone than they will on your TV or on any other device it's just very effective so nice stuff there it's running Android, as you can see. Obviously, that's an Android UI there. Here's the bad news. Uh-oh, it's running Gingerbread. Yeah, last year's operating system is back alive and well here. It's 2.3.7, and it will get an upgrade to Ice Cream Sandwich. We do not know when yet. Oddly, before this phone even came out, Sony had released Ice Cream Sandwich, Android OS 4.0 updates for a lot of the other Xperia lines. So why this little guy came out of the pipe without it? Well, don't know. They, Sony claimed that it was because they wanted to update their skin and all sorts of stuff for compatibility, but as you can see, this is really hardly skinned at all. Compared to the old days of Sony phones, you, you're looking at pretty much just straight Android here, which isn't a bad thing. It's pretty clean. We have the Timescape here, which is kind of like your flip card version of seeing your social networking updates and all that kind of thing. It's just kind of a little widget that runs here if you want, and you don't even have to use it. So pretty standard looking stuff. We take a look at the app draw. A nice translucent background there so you get to still see your pretty desktop picture. And again, pretty standard stuff. So that is what that is. It runs on a third generation, not fourth generation. There's another smaller, uh oh, not as big a one, a Qualcomm Snapdragon S3 CPU, 1.5 gigahertz dual core with Adreno 220 graphics. That's still pretty powerful stuff. And though we all have a, a need for speed and we're specs driven, to be honest, the difference between the S3 and the S4 for most people, even if you're playing games, well, it's, it's not really hugely important. They're both very fast. So we're not going to ding this too much for having the S3. And I suspect Sony wanted it because it was easier to do things like have the dedicated HDMI port and stuff like that. As we take a look around the phone, you can see this is a real premium piece. For the $99 with contract price tag, you're getting nice hardware. Beautiful glass front display. Now this is hardened mineral glass, shatter resistant, crack resistant, all that kind of thing. Uh, but it's not Corning Gorilla Glass. In terms of durability, no problem so far. Far, of course, we don't really abuse the heck out of our phones, but I'm I'm not really too worried about that. Down here we have four capacitive buttons, and well, capacitive buttons are they've been around for quite some time in phones, and they usually work really well. The thing is, that they really have very small hot zones for touching. And there's a little line under each one that will light up, but the icon won't light up when the backlighting comes on, which is a little peculiar. And your first inclination might be to touch the little line that shows up there. No, it doesn't do anything. So you have to touch right on the button, pretty squarely with the pad of your finger, and pretty close to the edge of the display, which is just a little bizarre. So not the best capacitive buttons I've ever used. We look at the back of the phone here, it's lovely high-end stuff. This is metal with a brush finish here, real honest to goodness, gets cold when it's cold out metal. Kind of looks like a good finish match for some of these carbon fiber notebooks we've been reviewing lately. You've got soft touch caps here, you, you want some plastic to actually allow for antenna penetration, that kind of thing. 12 megapixel camera there, your LED flash, usual Xperia logo there. A little plastic area here which is interesting and I suspect this is either for the antennas or it's a way to get the sealed battery out because yeah, just like the trend with a lot of higher end smartphones now, battery is sealed inside and it's 1900 milliamps. On this side here we have our volume controls, there's our power button and there's a dedicated camera button. Press it and hold it to launch the camera. Sony says 1.5 seconds from standby to shooting, and well, maybe it seems a little bit longer to me. But and once you're in the camera, you can press halfway to focus and press all the way to shoot, or you can use the on-screen shutter button, or you can tap to take a shot anywhere on the screen. Up here is our headphone jack, 
and on this side we've got a door for micro HDMI and micro USB and micro HDMI has been hard to find lately on phones. Everybody's gone to MHL phone connectors just kind of ignoring that whole thing. So it's nice to see it here. And we also wish that Sony had included the cable in the box because they have a lot of nice TV software that we're going to talk about that makes life easier than normal when connecting your phone via HDMI to your TV. Nice clean looking phone. Feels weighty. It's 5.1 ounces so it's not the world's heaviest phone but it feels pretty significant. And there's the bottom where there's nothing but a microphone hole. This cap up here is removable and inside you'll find the micro SD card slot and the micro SIM card slot. Pretty challenging to pull it off. It's on there pretty firmly. You push up. So here we have a little plastic piece off and there's our micro SD card slot. It does not come with the card. You're going to have to supply your own. But it does have 16 gigs of internal storage and 11.24 gigs are available for your use. And there's your little micro SIM slot and it's got a little carrier. So you yank that out to pull the micro SIM out. The front face of the phone does a good job of rejecting fingerprints. It doesn't get all gross and schmeary, but oddly the back, which is, well, mostly metal there, the metal actually picks up a lot of fingerprint oil, and probably by the end of this video you're going to see a lot on here. The Xperia Ion is a large phone, like most smartphones today. 4.6 inch screen, you can see how it fits in. This 4.7 inch HTC One X over here, and this is a Galaxy S3, so it's pretty much up there in the same size category with those guys. And here you can see in terms of thickness, fits right in with these guys. Other features include a 1.3 megapixel front camera that can shoot 720p video. It works with video chat, Skype, Google Talk, chat, all that kind of thing. It has NFC as well. Uh, AT&T hasn't partnered with anybody just yet for actual active purchasing of stuff using NFC. But this does support NFC in the, the form of smart devices like Sony's own smartwatch, uh, headphones that have NFC. You just tap to pair, for example. And just like Samsung's selling their little tech tiles, which are little NFC tags about the size of a quarter, Sony Ericsson is also selling those. So what you do is say you put one down in your nightstand, and whenever it comes near it, it knows that it should turn the ringer off and switch to dim mode or something like that. You know, whatever actions that you want to configure, applications that you launch, setting changes, that kind of thing, it can do that as well. It has the usual Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, Bluetooth, and a GPS with a GPS that works perfectly well both with Google Maps and the included AT&T Navigator. It supports GLONASS. In terms of software, it's not exactly bloatware-wooden, which is great. And as we mentioned, that, that Sony Xperia UI, it's uh, pretty lightweight. Let's see what we got here. Kindle's preloaded. We have Astro File Manager, which is a pretty handy file manager that you could also just download yourself from the Android market, but it gives you a head start. AT&T apps are inescapably always here. They're a square barcode scanner. Or family Maps and Family Navigator, AT&T Ready to Go, helps you set up your phone and transfer your contacts, that kind of stuff. I've downloaded Crackle, Sony's movie player. You can see it has an FM radio. We've downloaded Flash. You can still do that until August 15th. After that, then Adobe says no more downloading fresh installs of Flash. If you've got it pre-installed, you can do that and download updates, but no new ones. Facebook comes pre-loaded. Uh, social networking integration with Timescape is there as well. The usual full suite of Google apps, Gmail, email, YouTube player, Google Plus is on board, all that good stuff. We have both Sony's music player and the Google music player on board. Google Playbooks is here. We have Office Suite, which is an Office viewer. You can upgrade to the version that actually lets you edit and create documents if you want or load the Office Manager of your choice. AT&T's Live TV is here as well as the M-Spot Video Rental Service. And we've got Liveware Manager. We're going to show you that one right now. It's kind of interesting stuff. So you can see these are devices that it knows about. If you plug something into one of its ports, it can actually launch certain applications. So, for example, the HDMI one is the pretty cool one. So it can launch the TV launcher application that we'll show you soon. Likewise, with the, the headphones, you can choose to launch Google Play Music or the built-in music player, or really whatever application that you want, po podcast app, something like that. So that's pretty handy stuff. You can even tell it to launch a certain application when the charger is plugged into it. Sony actually made a little update center there for those of you who really like to keep on top of your software updates. And let's face it, who, who around here doesn't like to do that? We're enthusiastic about our phones and our software. On our phone, the Music Unlimited and Video Unlimited services were not preloaded. You can download those from the Google Market, or Google Play Store, rather, if you want to use those services. And that's uh, Sony's streaming services for video and for music. You can uh, rent 
buy, own, all that kind of stuff. The phone has a 1900 milliamp battery again that is sealed inside and Sony claims up to 6 hours and 42 minutes to be precise of talk time on 3G. Uh, so far the battery life has been pretty good on this. I, I honestly think that the Qualcomm S4 CPU, the latest generation, is a little more powerful than the S3, but still we made it through the day with LTE, because we are in an LTE service area without a problem. And speaking of LTE, you can see the speed test results that we've gotten here. And as you can see, in the Dallas Metroplex, we're getting some pretty good speeds on this phone, which are similar to the HTC One X and to the Galaxy S3 in terms of download speeds. So uh, clearly, our network has a good number of LTE devices on it. Speeds are pretty darn impressive. In terms of reception, it has good reception. One thing I notice is that it's more conservative with the bars. Now, bars, as we've learned from the iPhone, are a relative thing. They're not the most strong indication of signal performance. But when we looked at the actual signal in dB and compared this to our One X and to our Samsung Galaxy S3, the reception is actually comparable. So don't worry about the bars that it's showing. If it shows you one last test, just because they're actually being a little more realistic, say, than maybe HTC is these days in terms of equating bars to real signal. Voice quality on the phone has been excellent. I mean, really loud and landline clear. Very impressive. No trouble hearing our callers. They had no trouble hearing us. And really good clarity, nice, natural, full voice. Uh, noise, re noise reduction is, is okay. It's not the most aggressive that I've heard. In that way, though, it also doesn't mess with your own voice quality. But overall, I'd say very nice voice phone. And Sony Ericsson has always made nice voice phones. So as we're trans transferring over to just being a Sony mobile product, it's good to see that that's still there. And you can see we have a modern, minimal modern minimalist large dialer here with the usual shortcuts to your contacts and your favorites and your call log. Certainly giant easy to use buttons. In terms of synthetic benchmarks, Quadrant gets a 3126 score, which is pretty darn good, but we see more like 4000 with the fastest Tegra 3 and S4 Snapdragon phones, but still that's a pretty good number. On Tutu is 6391, and that's pretty close to actually what we're seeing on some other phones like the Galaxy S3 scored 6826. GL benchmark off screen test, Egypt off screen that is, 34 FIPS now. Uh, today's highest end phones can get up to 59, 60 FIPS sometimes, but still, in terms of game playing and performance, it's good stuff, and it supports PlayStation certified games. And now we're in Google Play Movies, and we're going to check out our own locally stored video so you can see how it does with HD movie content. And this is a 1080p MPEG-4 high profile, 5.1 channel clip, though obviously we're only going to hear it out of two channels at most right now. not terribly loud until you put it to just about maximum volume there, but screen is certainly stunning to look at. It's just, wow. <laughs> so sharp and so colorful. But you're probably going to want to use headphones to really enjoy the audio. And here's the built-in web browser, the usual WebKit thing, and very sharp again. Scrolling speed is fine. We do have Adobe Flash Player installed. Pinch zooming speeds are good. So, you see what I mean? I, we're not exactly wishing we had a faster CPU here. That's fine. And let's watch an Adobe Flash video and see how it does. Doing fine. It's actually a bit louder now. Still not the full speaker we've ever heard, though, but doing just fine. Controls are pretty responsive, too, for Adobe Flash. Switching to full screen is easy. It looks great. And now here's one of the cool things about the Xperia. If you plug in an HDMI cable to your TV, it automatically launches, well, the TV launcher application. That's what we're looking at now. 
So you don't have to do anything, you don't have to futz around, you don't have to switch between your gallery application and your video application and everything else. It puts it all together here for you, and you can see there's a plus symbol. You, you can add whatever app you want, so say I want Crackle here, or Netflix, or something like that, no problem. Do the web browser, and there we are, we still have our Flash video. And then we're back to our web page. So, a giant screen web browsing, no problem. And if we tap into gallery, here's all my photos and videos. And here's Sony's pretty sample images. Speedy, responsive, zooming, no problem. Works great. And if we want to watch our videos on the big screen, since they are 1080p, there it is, working just fine. So that's a pretty neat feature, and it also has DLNA for those of you who want to try doing this wirelessly. Sometimes that can be a little bit more tricky. And here's another neat feature. You can plug this in over HDMI to your TV. I believe this requires a $70 dock that's sold separately from the phone. And it uses the two-way feature communication of an HDMI, that's bidirectional communication over the cable using something called CEC. And if you're using your TV's remote, you can actually control the device. So you don't have to get up and poke the little buttons on the screen. Fast forward, rewind, uh, directional navigation, that kind of stuff is supported using your TV's remote. Now, I didn't have much luck with this, but you might have luck. I know other people have gotten it working. And here's what I'm talking about, about the screen. Right now we're in the camera viewfinder. You see how the plant actually looks better here than it does, well, in real life over here? Amazing stuff. Anyway, one of the big things about this phone, perhaps the biggest, is the 12 megapixel camera. And you know, in the days of Sony Ericsson, they were known for making some of the best camera phones on the planet. They and Nokia were always fighting for top position there, particularly in the European market for high-end camera phones. And that carries through here. This has an Exmor R Sony sensor, f2.4 fast lens. It takes stupendous shots. It really does. It's not just about the pixels, or you get plenty of pixels packed in here, but the colors are so rich and vibrant, yet color accurate. It's not cartoony, but there's no color shift there. It does a good job of exposing outdoors in bright sunlight without getting huge amounts of white out. And it does nicely in low light. Now, I know some reviews have complained about the low light, but we've seen only good things. In fact, I've taken some night shots that I'll show you. I mean, completely nightlife kind of street scene things, and it did a great job just on the auto setting. Speaking of auto setting, you can see there's a setting right here, Scene Auto. And you can tap here and choose from a variety of scenes. Oddly, macro isn't right there looking us right in the face. And you can see that there's actually 3D sweep panorama mode. You can shoot 3D video and you can play that on a 3D TV. So pretty simple compared to some of the others, but there are more settings. And if we hit the menu button, you can see. And any of these you want to drag up to the control, control strip up top, you can. So say I want to drag my resolution up here press and hold, and put it in one of these empty spots. Cool, right? Now I find, like I said, the auto scene setting, it does a really good job. But say we want to go to normal, then you can get control over more things here. Like you can see your brightness controls suddenly appear. When it's in auto mode, it's going to take care of all that for you. But you've got white balance, ISO, exposure value, your self timer here, smile detection option, focusing mode. So there is where we get to. Single, multi, autofocus, face detection mode, infinity, and touch to focus. Again, oddly, there is no macro mode to choose from here, though. And if I want to take a picture, I can do the tap to focus thing. I can use this here, and I can use the dedicated camera button on the side. Press it halfway to focus, press it all the way to take a shot. So we press halfway, and then pretty good shot times. Takes a little minute to process it, but fast. Camera can also shoot 1080p video and it has the same kind of interface. You can drag and drop whatever you want to the interface. We always have our gallery strip available down here, and this is the strip of controls. One thing I noticed is it has an anti shake technology, and that actually makes things shaky, so don't turn that feature on. Now, this is what I'm talking about here with those night shots. Isn't that nice? Lots of color, and there's a good amount of detail, and even if you're looking on the computer screen, the noise is not too hideous considering it was about. 9.10 at night. 
Again, nice colors, lots of detail, natural looking too. And there's a daylight shot of a bird that was trying its best to run away, and we actually managed to capture it pretty sharply. So yes, if, if you're looking at this because you're a shutterbug and you love that 12 megapixel camera with the Sony Exmor R sensor, it takes good photos. Yes, it does. So how about gaming? Here we are in Frontline Commando. Nice graphics, looking sharp. Ah, got him. Play, plays just fine, very smooth. So that's the Sonia Xperia Ion. It's really a lot of fun for $99. AT&T has been good about popping out those $99 phones that are pretty compelling, like the Lumia 900, for example, from Nokia. What are you giving up compared to the HTC One X and the Galaxy S3 that cost twice as much with contract? Well, you're getting the older version of Android. And again, this one will get the upgrade, so at some point, hopefully, we will see parity there. That's the biggest difference. And the other one is this has the third rather than the fourth generation processor. Fast and capable, though, may be, for those of you who like future-proof phones and the fastest possible CPU, well, you're not going to get it here for your $99. But you do get things like the incredible 12-megapixel meg camera, this really lovely Bravia display, excellent voice quality, and the neat HDMI out, the smart features, the NFC features, all that kind of stuff. And if you're not going to be buying this on contract, it's worth noting that this guy is about $100 less than the heavy hitters like the HTC One X. That is, it's $449 without contract. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. This is the Sony Xperia Ion. Visit our website to read the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.